Over the last 40 years in the UK, we've seen a real decline in side-by-side -side usage in the field. Today, we're going to look at some of the reasons why, try and get to the bottom of it. Before we start, I should probably say this is going to be a little bit of a side-by-side -side versus over and under. Mark II, really in favour of the over and under, looking why people are moving in that direction very much more than the traditional side-by-side. -side. We're going to start with some of the positives of a side-by-side -side and then look at some of the reasons why they just don't sit in society anymore. The first positive I want to talk about is the value for money. Obviously supply and demand is a fairly big thing, nobody wants side-by-sides, and so something that could be worth potentially three or four thousand pounds, where nobody actually wants to buy it, they're selling for three or four hundred. Things that were six or seven hundred are now thirty to forty pounds. At auction, they are valueless. That is the biggest deal, the most attractive thing about cyber sides is the fact you can own one for very little money. That value for money really isn't just value, it's quality for money. You know, a Coffs or an ATA, that's value for money. These are quality for money. These are hand-built 120-year-old guns things of beauty. Where the guns are 120 years old, there is a sense of tradition, a certainly a sense of occasion about taking that gun, breaking it, pulling it out of the bag and going, this is a piece of history I'm going to use today. I want to keep tradition alive. I'm going to keep this piece of history alive. And there is nothing quite so nice about using an old side by side to go and have a bit of fun. Last positive is that a cartridge will do what a cartridge will do. It doesn't matter whether it's in a side by side tube or an over and under tube. If you point that gun in the right place, they will both kill the birds the same. This can be seen when looking back at ancient game books, ancient 120 year old game books, when they were out killing hundreds of brace of wild birds a day with side by sides. So they are just as good at killing, in theory. All right, so now we've blown a bit of smoke up a side by side's ass, let's move on as to why they really are in massive decline. The biggest single factor is this. People nowadays don't learn by walking up hedgerows with their father, their uncle or their friend. They want to learn to shoot, they go to a shooting school. And if their friends shoot, it's at a clay ground. And as such, those clay bash and drain pipes of old that were slated and never allowed near a pheasant, well, that's what people pick up. And if they go for a lesson, that is what someone will put in their hands. This is for many reasons. The first, over and unders are harder. Parts are more available, they are generally more machine made. If your Breta firing pin breaks, you get one out of a pot, you stick it in the hole, you close the gun up, and you're good to go again. If your firing pin breaks in a nice old quality side by side, or even a low quality side by side, you gotta spin the lathe up and make a new one. Second and probably most importantly, it is significantly easier to get people hitting clays with an over and under. The fact that the forend is deeper, the pistol grip is there, gives a lot more consistency, a lot more control over the gun. You can aim over that single sight plane rib that hangs above, it's an uncluttered sight picture. You can shoot it like a rifle, you can shoot it maintainedly that bit easier. Your sight picture just is more obvious to a beginner and as such once you've been and learnt on an over and under the last thing you're going to do is walk into your local gun shop and go i love a side by side please are oh, you yeah. even if you do want to buy a side by side you're going to go into the shop and there's going to be 10 to 20 to 1 over and under to side by side and as such the choice in over and under is just that much more nowadays where a lot of side by sides are getting older and their value is dropping people aren't choosing to repair them and the scrap bins really are piling high. 30 or 40 years ago, these guns were totally worth doing up, which is why you see 30 or 40 year old sleeving jobs, restocks and things like this to keep these old guns going. And now one generation later, it's just not worth it. Again, starting on over and under and going to a side by side is really quite difficult. Once you've learned to shoot an over and under with the big hands and so on and so forth, not saying there's not side by side live pigeon guns that are very similar to an over and under in the way they feel and handle, but they are either rare and crap or you know, you're looking at three or four thousand as opposed to a, a thousand pound for a second aberretta that's going to possibly be a wiser investment. The problem with moving from a single trigger to a double trigger, it's just not an easy thing to do. Although actually, that's a lie, it's a really easy thing to do, but it's not, it's another barrier. And barriers, these micro barriers, are why people just go, I've started an over and under, might as well buy an over and under. All my friends shoot an over and under. It takes a real gentleman to go, you know what, I'm going to keep tradition alive. And in reality, nobody wants to hit less. Nobody wants to hit less clays, kill less birds, and as such, if you shoot better with an over and under, which in reality 90% of people do, you're gonna buy an over and under, not a side by side. And then if you do wanna buy a side by side, trying to get somebody to teach you to shoot a side by side properly, if you haven't learned, or perhaps aren't a completely natural shot, is quite difficult. Most people are taught to teach on an over and under. And as such, translating that into a side by side, it's a very different style. There's very few 
very high quality side by side teachers. Finally, as I said, they're becoming less fashionable. It's perfectly acceptable always to go on a game shoot with a side by side, but they're now more fascinating than they've ever been. I know there are some syndicates out there that will refuse to let, let you entry with an over and under, but at the same time, cyber sides are diminishing in the field. There's no doubt about it. So I'm sure a huge amount of you will disagree with me on this, but I'm not wrong because the market really is going that way. A mixture of fashion, tuition, and just the way the world's going really means that cyber sides are dwindling. Yes, we sell a lot of cheap ones because who wouldn't want to own a hundred pound gun to put in the back of the cabinet to take out as a novelty? And yes, there's still a market for the really high-end ones for people who just appreciate quality. However, I think that's pretty much the way it's gonna go. I can't see a revival. The problem is they have smaller chambers in the older ones, they don't take steel, they're less versatile than an over and under or a semi-automatic, period. Most people now want a steel shot proofed gun with multi chokes and that in a cyber side comes in at high, high money. I think the real thing that scares me here is that when I was a kid and 20 years ago, over and under still hadn't taken a full hold and there was still enough out there that in a shooting field you'd see full teams of guns shooting side by sides again and again and again. And over the last 20 something years, I've watched that diminish. And I genuinely am worried, and here's where you're allowed to get angry at me, that one day people will be allowed to shoot semi-automatics in the shooting field at Pheasants. And I think that is where I'm going to end it. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Take care. Goodbye. And I'll see you next time. Hi, guys. Welcome to the gun shop.